Hello, everybody. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for um, coming to this session. There's a lot of cool sessions going on right now, uh, but you know, you guys made a good choice. I don't want anybody to leave. But uh, thank you for coming. Um, I've given this talk a couple times, and uh, because it's about Drupal 8, it's kind of a new talk every time I do it. Um, so just bear with me. Um, this talk does have an expiration date because at the point of giving this, we're still in one of the alpha releases of Drupal 8. So, so what? Yeah, I, I, I hadn't heard that, but that's, that, that's cool. Um, it's getting close. So, um, thank you. I hope you're enjoying Drupal Camp LA. Uh, my name is Bob Kepford. Let's see if I can get my slides to work. I'm a senior Drupal developer at Media Current. Um, I've been doing Drupal for, I forget how many years, but since Drupal 5. Um, curious, how many, what, let's see, how many people have started using Drupal since Drupal 7? That was your first version of Drupal. Drupal 6, Drupal 5, 4.7. Wow. See, I, yeah, cool. That's very cool. So. Drupal's changed a lot since uh, 5, 4.7 days, even 6. Um, Drupal 8 is, an, is probably the biggest shift in the history of Drupal, I think. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about why that's a good thing. Um, before that, um, I'm a senior Drupal developer at Media Current, and uh, it's a great place. I've been working there almost two years now. Um, and we do Drupal development, design, theming, content strategy. If you are looking for a place to work, I can highly recommend that, as well as Mario, who's an audience. He's a native LA person here. Um, and uh, it's a great place, so if you're interested, you could talk to me or Mario afterwards, and we'd be happy to talk to you about that and get you connected. And uh, maybe you could, maybe, you, maybe it's a place you'd like to work. Uh, we're a distributed company, so we have employees all over the United States. Um, you get to work from homes, you know, full benefits, and all that kind of good stuff, um, but we get to work on really cool projects and do Drupal um, in a really cool environment as far as a, a company. So you might have heard of me, I don't know, I'm not trying to, to uh, say you should have heard of me, but if you've ever subscribed to the Weekly Drop, I'm the person that does that every week. Um, I try to get it out every week, um, but you know, some weeks are better than others. Um, oh, you're welcome. So, just to say, I have some free t-shirts up here, and if you don't know what the weekly drop is, it's a weekly Drupal newsletter um, that covers any type of resources, news, d new projects that would be relevant to Drupal developers or themers or site owners or anyone interested in Drupal. It's just a resource that's designed to save you time so you can subscribe to it and once a week get an email that kind of gives you everything you'd want to know, but in a way that's easy to, to read. And so you're not spending hours of your day, of your day every day trying to keep up. Um, so I've been doing that for about three years now. Um, so if you want a t-shirt or some stickers, I have some up here for free. Um, yeah. So thank you all that are already subscribers. I appreciate that. So let's talk about uh, Drupal. I firmly believe this statement. I was going to put quotes and just say, like, this is quoting myself. But I, I believe you will be able to build Drupal sites like real websites with Drupal 8 on the day it's released. Um, if Most of you have been around Drupal for a while. I, said, I think Drupal 6 was most common. Um, one of the big criticisms for people when you tell them about Drupal is that when they initially install it, they get you know a kind of okay experience. When you install Drupal out of the box, it doesn't. it's not that impressive. But you go back to Drupal 6, even Drupal 7, it's not that impressive. Um, even, even if you configure it, you can build a site with it, but most of us that have been around Drupal know that you actually have to download a lot of modules, which is great. That's the best thing about Drupal, but the problem is, is when you go from version 6 to version 7 to version 8, whenever version 7 was released, there was a big span of time where there were a lot of modules that hadn't been upgraded to 7, and so the adoption of Drupal 7 was a lot slower than a lot of us wanted it to be because we were waiting on certain contributed modules that we use to be upgraded. And one thing I want to just point out with Drupal 8 is that out of the box, Drupal 8 with, has so much functionality in it that you can actually build most of the sites you probably have built in the last year, you can probably build with just Drupal Core 
Um, you might need to build some integration modules if you're integrating with third-party things, but out of the box, you can do a whole lot with Drupal now. Um, so I think Drupal 8 is the first like complete CMS version of Drupal there's been. Like you can you can do a whole lot with it. So I know it's hard to believe, but like I I really do believe that. Um, you're going to be able to build sites straight out, out of the box with Drupal, no contributed modules. Some theming maybe, but Drupal 8 is Drupal plus a lot of awesome stuff that was in, was in Contrib before. So let's talk about what's new. Um, I won't be discussing all of the new features in Drupal 8 because of time, but we'll, we're going to talk about primarily ones that are relevant to building a, a blog or a company website. Uh, you know, your average website that you're going to be asked to build. So we're going to talk about uh, some of these. There's, a, there's new fields that have been ported from contrib modules into core. New HTML5 elements have been added to Drupal 8. The content editing experience is greatly improved. Um, display and form modes have been greatly improved. Uh, the mobile, it, the mo mobile support and mobile experience in Drupal 8 out of the box is, is, a, is a huge improvement over Drupal 7. In Drupal 8, we have views in core, the tour module accessibility, better multilingual support, uh, CMI, which is configuration management, um, and web services. So let's talk about, the first one we're going to talk about is at the base level, which is HTML. So HTML5, uh, several new elements have been added. The picture element, which is basically gives you support for responsive images. So you can, you can actually provide different images depending on the, the screen size of the, of the visitor coming to your site. Um, this is an HTML5 element, and now it's baked into core, so when you create a, a, an image, you know, this is what you get out of the box. No need to add on a contributed module. And I do want to mention that in Drupal 7, almost everything in this presentation is possible, but it's all contrib modules, things you have to configure, which can vary in difficulty. Um, but we're just going to talk about how great Drupal 8 is going to be. All right. So... The next HTML5 element in Drupal 8 is the date element, which allows you to allows the browser to provide a widget, so entering a date is easy. Um, and depending on your device the, or the browser, it's going to give you a, a nice widget to work with dates and times right out of the box. No need to install any like a JavaScript library or anything like that. That just works. Email and uh, the email and the telephone elements also the new HTML5 elements that you can do in Drupal 7, but in Drupal 8, they're just ready to go straight out of the box. Um, you know, they, they basically recognize that this is a telephone number, so if you're on, your, on a phone, it's going to give you the right keyboard for that. So these are just really great improvements as far as user experience goes. The placeholder element, one of my personal favorites in HTML5, you could do this before with JavaScript, um, but HTML5 just supports this out of the box, and so does Drupal 8. So let's talk about the new fields that have been added to Drupal 8. These are all contrib projects. Um, the comments are now fields. That's probably the one exception. Comments is fields. So you get all the functionality that you get with uh, something being a field. It's a comment. Uh, so you, you know that the flexibility that that's going to provide. The entity reference field is in core. The link field, email field, telephone field, and the list goes on. A lot of contrib projects around fields are in core. Content editing. I'd say the probably single biggest complaint I get from folks that are migrating from something like WordPress over to Drupal is content editing experience, especially out of the box. So um, I spent a whole lot of time working with clients on basically taking Drupal out of the box and trying to make the content editing experience something that's enjoyable for their content creators. Uh, so Drupal 8, and Drupal 7 was a big improvement over Drupal 6, but in Drupal 8, um, we have a WYSIWYG out of the box and enabled, installed, and configured. And it's not a bad WYSIWYG editor. I think most of us probably don't like WYSIWYGs. That's just pretty much a standard with web developers and web front end people. But um, of all the front end um, WYSIWYGs that are out there, CK Editor is probably my favorite. Um, I used to really go with Tiny MCE, but I've been doing a lot of work with CK Editor recently. and. Uh, so I think it's a really good choice. Uh, it's very extensible, especially like version 4. Um, so that's installed out of the box, configured, and works really well. 
Um, that, and as well, in addition to that, it's easy to extend it. There's a whole widgets API where you can extend the WYSIWYG editor to do things that you want to do with Drupal, like embedding uh, Drupal entities, um, different types of media that are embedded. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that can be done there. Um, you can insert inline images with captions with the new uh, WYSIWYG editor. In-place editing is another thing that's pretty cool. I'm going to show you in a second. There's a, a huge improvement as far as uh, the publishing user experience, including the functionality for drafts. Another pet peeve of people that come to Drupal is the uh, whole publish workflow. So if you create a node, um, you have to go uncheck the publish box, and then, then that node is not published. So that doesn't make very much sense to a non-technical person. Actually, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, but in Drupal 8, that's been, uh, that's, been, that's been fixed. So let's look at the WYSIWYG real quick. All right. So as you can see, it's a, if you've used CK Editor, nothing, nothing fancy here. We're just looking at a standard um, WYSIWYG editor. But the nice thing is that you don't have to go hunting around uh, for uh, the, you know, which one are we going to use on this project? Uh, which module do I install? Do I install WYSIWYG API? Do I install CK, CK Editor module? Um, but out of the box, you get you know, inserting links. You can view source. Um, you can embed images. But you can, as you can see, like the overall experience is, is, is a lot better. Um, you can save and publish, or save as unpublished. So that's the draft function that I was talking about. Um, so it, it, if you've ever used WordPress, you can see where we've kind of stole some of their ideas as far as the, uh, the editing interface. But um, this, this whole side of the, uh, of the node edit and the node add pages has been improved instead of having to scroll down all the way down the page to, to uh, see these menu items. Most of us have widescreen browsers, so we have a lot more real estate there to work with. So um, I, you know, this isn't the most exciting thing for developers, but if you're doing Drupal sites for people they will really appreciate this versus Drupal 7 out of the box. So in-place editing. Um, I'm not as excited about this, but I know um, we have clients that ask for this. Um, and what in-place editing is, basically it allows you to go to a page and click the edit, so you get a contextual menu. Um, and then allows you to edit that without actually leaving the page you're on. So you can edit a blog post, like make a quick fix to like maybe a misspelling or something like that. And folks that just kind of jump in and out of the content management system and don't really know it real well will love this. And so this is, this is a really handy thing. It's just baked in. There's nothing special you have to do. Um, you can disable it if you don't want it to be, you know, it's, it's under Drupal permissions and all that. But um, it's a nice, nice thing. It's another selling point for Drupal. So this means that all of us can, it's an easier job for us convincing people, hey, you should use this. Or, you know, I think it, all of this stuff is, is helpful for the whole Drupal community. So let's talk about forms and the field display changes. Um, this isn't a big deal, but if you've ever worked, you know, built, built sites, content, uh, content types, you know that, like, you've, you're familiar with this page. Um, so what's happened is, the manage fields uh, tab has been uh, has been changed a little bit. So now, it you just manage the fields from this page. But if you want to manage the forms in the order in which they appear, that's broken out into a separate tab. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in the fields API. I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, but basically, this is just kind of a refactor of this part of the admin screen, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to to understand as a as a newbie. So, how many of you are familiar with view modes in Drupal? So view modes, um, you know, we, we use them all the time. Um, they're basically a way to display an entity. And so, uh, out of the box in Drupal, they're not really like brought out to like, oh, you should use these. You know, if you know about them and have learned kind of how to work with them on the API level, they're they're great. Um, but so so there's been some contributed modules that have kind of made that easier to do, and those have been kind of replaced with the core functionality. So now you can create and manage view modes out of the box in core, which previously would require you to write like a hook function or, or install, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the module, but there's a, there's a great module for doing this in the UI. 
but basically you, you can do this out of the box now. So not only can you do this for view mode, so like say the, the search display of a node or the teaser display of a node or the block display of a node, you can also do this for the form. So you can have multiple layouts and displays of node forms or user forms uh, now as well. Um, oh, it replaces the entity view modes module. That's, that's the module I was thinking of. So we've, uh, basically it looks like this. So this is just the view modes out of the box. You can see we have all of our view modes listed in one handy place and we can edit them and, and move fields in and out of them, change the widgets that, that they're using to be rendered and a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Um, but this also just is like one less thing that you need to write code to do. You can still do it in code, but but it's nice to have a, a place where you can just go and see all of these. All right, let's talk about mobile. So it's 2014. For years we heard how mobile is taking over everyone's. We really have to make that a priority. And finally, Drupal Core has caught up to where the rest of the web is on mobile. Um, so if you're building Drupal 7 sites right now, uh, you have to do quite a bit of work to make them responsive, especially on the back end. Like most of us can, can, can build a theme or write a theme or, or download a theme that's pretty responsive and, and, and we can download a few modules and enables things for images and all that kind of stuff and make a pretty good mobile site, uh, a responsive site that is. But the whole thing just kind of working in core is a huge advantage. So as you can see with this screenshot, um, this is the, the seven admin theme, the module page. And as you can see, like this isn't what you would see in a Drupal 7 uh, site. It would not look like this unless you had a custom, uh, custom module. So the, we'll just run down the, quickly the, uh, the mobile features that are included in core. So now images are handled in a responsive way. So they, they scale. And using the picture element, you can control like which image is used for which display, which size screen. Um, tables are responsive, so uh, an example would be in views or in many of the paging, pages in Drupal core, like you're going to need tables. And so out of the box, responsive tables are, are really well handled, I think. Um, all the themes in Drupal core are responsive. The admin theme is responsive, and, so, and the mobile toolbar, which is probably the one that jumps out to most people the, the most, is the mobile toolbar. And these are all available in Drupal 7 but they're just ready to go out of the box with Drupal 8. Um, and responsive uh, preview. You can even install Drupal on a phone. I haven't done this, but like you can run through the installer on, on a mobile device, provided you're logged in and, and all that kind of good stuff, and run the installer on a phone, which is pretty, pretty cool. And my personal favorite, there's, there's only one other thing I'm more excited about it, well, two other things I'm more excited about than this, is that the overlay module is no longer in core. Uh, you know, I, that is, that's always the first thing I disable or like I even have files like, you know, Drush command that just disables it because a lot of us hate it. Some people don't, I understand. But I think for those folks that, that like it, like the inline editing kind of replaces it. So overlay is gone. Yay. I would say my number two favorite thing about Drupal 8 is that views is in core. So I'm, I'm extremely excited about that. I think we were talking about this at lunch. What took so long? We're not going to talk about that because I don't really have a good answer for it. But I'm just happy that Views is in core. Um, there's a few reasons why I'm happy. It's not that, um, let me first say what I'm not excited, why I'm not. I, I don't mind downloading modules and enabling them. Um, but because view is, Views is in core, all the listings can be written with Views. So all of your pages that list content, all of your pages that list anything can be created with Views. And, I'm pretty sure almost all of them have been ported over to be, being views. So that means you can override the, the uh, account, the user list page. You can, you can override admin slash content. I mean, you could do this before, but it took more work. So now you just, like, you can install Drupal. Hey, I want to add um, the, an email search box, or I want to add, like, a first name, last name search box to the user page. So now you just do that with views like you would on anything you wrote custom. Um, on top of that, Views has been, you know, everyone uses it, right? Um, and in Drupal, we're not really going to talk about, like, web services and stuff like that, but it is extremely easy to create a RESTful server in Drupal 8. Like, out of the box, you install it, you enable 
um, the REST module, you can enable the HAL module, and then you get exports from views. So you can create a list of content, and you can provide a feed that a mobile app can consume, or another site, like a, you could have like a node server or something that consumes your data from your Drupal 8 site. Um, so that's extremely exciting. Um, you could do this with Drupal 7, but like not out of the box. Quite a bit of work is, has to be done to, do, to make, it work, make it work this way. So it's, it's, it's a big win. I think this is probably one of the most key elements to the future of Drupal, and Drupal actually surviving the next five years, in my opinion, is that like, we have to be able to uh, use it as just kind of a back end for other systems. Um, it's great that it does all this other stuff on the front end. It should, but we have to like, you know, take care of this uh, RESTful service. Like That's one of our strong points is we have a great API. And so making that easy is great. Um, but for the most part, it's the same views you've already used in 7. You're not going to have to learn how to do all this new stuff. It's the same one you're using in Drupal 7. So here's an example of views that are out of the box installed. So you see like you've got content, files, front page. These are all now views. They're not like hard-coded things you have to turn off um, because you can't configure them, which, you know, how many people actually use the slash front, um, you know, actual out-of-the-box uh, river of news as it used to be called? Nobody uses that. I mean, because mostly, like, it doesn't do what you want it to do. I mean, you can use it, of course. There's nothing wrong with it. But now it's easy to just change it. So it's awesome. All right. Improvements to blocks. Um, how many people, there's been a long kind of like back and forth. There's like three kind of approaches to things. Some people use blocks a lot. Some people use panels. Some people use the context module, which uses blocks. Um, and I've been on all like all three of those positions, depending on the project. Um, but blocks are a pretty handy thing to have. Um, and But there have been things that just don't make sense about them. Um, more things are now blocks. So first of all, there are a lot of things out of the box with Drupal that just are things that you print out, they're variables that you print out in your theme. For example, breadcrumbs. So now breadcrumbs are a block. Site branding is a block. These are the things you used to have to like go edit the theme, make a custom theme, move those around in your theme. Now they're blocks so you can drop them in and configure them in, in the Drupal UI. One of, the, one of the things that we'll find on projects a lot is that somebody wants to have a block because they want to be able to place it all over their site, but they also want to have like these custom fields on it, or they want it to have, you know, a field that's a link. But you just can't do that out of the box with with blocks. There's a, there's a module called Bean that's great, and you should be using it if you need that in Drupal 7. But Drupal 8 blocks are full entities, and you can make a custom block type to do whatever you need it to do. Um, so you have all those all the things you can do with a content type as far as fields you can do with a block now. Another thing um, that I have found many times to need is to be able to embed a block in multiple places on the same page or multiple places on different pages, that kind of stuff, um, which is not possible out of the box with Drupal 7. Um, there's a multi-block module, but it's been rendered obsolete in Drupal 8. So if you need to put a menu at the top of your web page and the same menu at the bottom, and you, how many have ever had this issue? <laughs> All of us probably. Out of the box, that's not a problem. You can place a block in many regions as you want to. So the block, uh, hold on. Yeah. These GIFs. Sorry about that. This one's not looking. There we go. Okay. So you can basically create custom block types. Um, and they work. So I've got one here called the sponsor block. And as you can see, we got a body field on it. I can add a title field. I can add a link. Um, so then that becomes another, basically another content type or an entity. Um, and you can, you know, then, then your users can create content on the website for these that's only specific to the content. And then all of your configuration, your block types can be exported to code and, you know, in your version control system. So you're not dealing with those custom blocks in Drupal 7 that are in your database. Um, so it's, it's a... It's a thing like if you've ever had to solve this problem, you, you, know, you, know, you know the pain that it is. So we've kind of talked about components that everyone is using now to build sites. 
Let's talk about um, the experience of a brand new website. that You built a, a site for someone, maybe they're new to Drupal, they don't know where everything is. Um, so you either have to do a couple things, like you have a training, which is probably the best way to do this. You have a training where you go through and show them how to do everything. Or maybe you point them to like, uh, you know, Drupalize Me or something. Um, or they come to a camp. Uh, but one of the cool things that if you've ever like, signed up for something like Basecamp or any kind of uh, software as a service product, the first time you log in, you'll see kind of like a little jQuery modal, uh, uh, modal that'll pop up and it tells you, hey, click here to do this, click here to do that. And you can do that in Drupal 7. There's a couple modules that, that do that. There's a Joyride module. It's really good. But there's a, there was a, now in Drupal core, like this is out of the box, there's a module called Tour. And we'll just look at, this is the views interface. And so you just click on the, the tour button at the top of the screen. And it basically takes you through a tour of the views interface and shows you where things are. And as you click it, it takes you to the next place, gives you a little bit of instruction there. It's just, I mean, and this is just something that you would set up when you finish your project. Say, hey, I want to give you a tour of creating a node. Here's what you do. Uh, and it'll just take someone through the process of doing that. Um, so that's... You know, we can depend on that. So what, why is it cool? Like, there's a lot of these things that some of us might say, why is this in core? This is, you know, nobody, not everybody needs this. The reason this is in core is because now as a module developer, well, you can ship with your module a tour to show someone how to use it, which is exactly what Views has done. So that's a huge win. Yes? I, so the question was, how customizable is the tour module? I can, do you have to be a developer, I guess is what you're asking, and write code to make this work? I've not built tours with this, like in Drupal 8. Um, I don't believe you need to be a developer. If anyone in the room knows, has an answer to that question that's more definitive, please speak up. But I don't believe, I believe it is like something that you could do without writing code. There might be, um, so I think if you're writing, you might have to do some code. Um, I'm just not sure. Um, but I would be surprised if there's not a, like a contributed module that would make that an easy process. I think you can build them out. We, we just need to look into that. I can look into that. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think the goal is first that not to have to be a developer to do this. But I've more been thinking about it. It's like, hey, I built this module, this custom functionality. You know, I want to show somebody how it works. This is really great. Um, so. so configuration management. So any developers in the room know what I'm talking about. So we all, how many of you use the features module? Like, so if you use version control or you deploy your, um, your local changes to a remote server, you have had to suffer through the pain, which is the way Drupal's handled, handled that since its inception. Um, configuration management, the CMI, the CMI, which is, I always say CMI initiative, which is redundant, but configure, uh, configuration management initiative was a, like a project basically to say, let's fix this for once and for all. Let's build a configuration, a configuration API so that when somebody writes uh, a module that the configuration of that module is stored in a way that we can standardize so that we can support um, deploying these configurations separately from content so that we don't have to worry about the database. Or we don't have to, you know, work around our dysfunctional way of doing this now. So features module, most of us probably use that. Um, it gets the job done in the best way it can, but it is a pain. And at some point, all of us have had to, like, we've set up our site locally, we've made our changes or whatever, and then we go to the production site, and we have to kind of go through and click here and click there because there are certain things that we just can't get into uh, version control. We can't deploy very well. It's hard. So that's the idea. So configuration management is just any developer is going to get excited. Um, we've all been crying about this and complaining about features. So it's just a great thing, um, one, one API to handle it. Um, but let's not get too excited because it's not finished. The API is there, 
but it's not perfect yet. Currently, and I, and I understand that this is the way it's going to be supported uh, in Drupal 8, at least uh, 8.0, is there's two things going to be supported, full export and full import of your configuration. So the way that works is you go to your site, and you go to configuration, click export, and what you get is a, you know, a basically a, a tar gzipped file with all of your configuration and the configuration that you download there can be uploaded onto your production site through the admin interface. This is the out of the box experience. The idea here is that to make this so that non-developers can manage their configuration in a way that's easy for them to do. So as a site owner you probably don't know Git. You probably don't understand what a YAML file is. If you understand it, like you probably have no business logging into the server and doing a git push or git pull. So this is designed to handle it in a way that's user friendly for non-developers. But in the behind the scenes, this is all being done with an API that handles it in a really, really great way. So when you, when you export your configuration, what you get is a collection and a ton of them, um, these YAML files. And YAML is a format that comes from the Ruby world, um, but is something that can be used in any programming language. It's a really simple like key value kind of file format. Um, and it's pretty descriptive. You can see this is the, the, the uh, NID node field and manage content. Um, you, can, you can see kind of just reading this, you can kind of see exactly what I've exported here. And so every module that a developer writes is going to have a set of YAML files, which is the default configuration. So where is the configuration stored is the question a lot of developers ask. So during the process of Drupal 8, this is when all over the place there's been arguments, there's been a lot of debate, a lot of bike shedding. Um, and it, but at the end of the day, this really doesn't matter to the site owner. Out of the box, Drupal will still store its configuration in the database. But that can be changed if you want to store it on the file system, you can. Um, what, the way that it's stored currently, if you install Drupal 8 right now, there's a, a database table. I think it's called uh, config or configuration, but kind of think of it as the same as the variables table in Drupal 7. And so all of the configuration is stored in one table. That is for, the, there's a few reasons for that. One being that uh, performance, there are performance problems with reading from the file system on some servers and some inf configurations that Drupal sites are on. Not all, but some. There are issues with file permissions on some operating systems that Drupal supports. There are issues um, with uh, syntax problems. If something is uh, incorrect in one of these files, you don't want your site going down. So basically a cache of your configurations in the database table for those reasons, as well as there's another reason for security. Um, but for a lot of us that deploy to say Pantheon, Acquia, Black Mesh, any, name your service provider, name your uh, you know, serve, uh, hosting company, we're going to want to put this in version control. So there's a contributed module that's already working and developers are using that will allow you to store your active configuration, what your site is running off, in the file system. But out of the box, it's in the database. So any questions about that, we can feel free to ask me in a few seconds here, and we'll talk about that. Um, I'm not an expert on the configuration management, but it is like one of the things I'm most excited about. I'd say that's number one. <laughs> so... All right, so just to wrap up, you can build a full featured site in Drupal. I don't know if any of you are still skeptical about that, but I, I really think that this is something that can be done. I think we could build an install profile to just demonstrate this, which would be awesome. There used to be a, a project called, uh, I think it was Snowman or something that Jeff Eaton had talked about in Drupal 7 days, which was build a out of the box experience for Drupal that is impressive and can actually do stuff. Um, and that's pretty challenging with Drupal 7. With Drupal 8, I don't think it would be that challenging, and I don't know if anybody's actually doing that, but we could make a really cool impro uh, install profile with Drupal that they could select when they install it, and it could like demonstrate all that you could do with Drupal out of the box without having to hire a developer. So, new fields, HTML5, content editing experiences improved, mobile, views, the tour module, accessibility, um, I didn't talk about some of these, like web services, but um, it's there and it's done really well. Um, better multi-language support, I didn't talk about that either, but um, mainly because I'm not very much experienced in that area. But if you get to talk to anyone that's done multilingual stuff, they will, they will say, yes, we're excited about Drupal 8. So 
few resources if you're wanting to kind of keep up with Drupal 8 or kind of get up to speed. Um, the Ultimate Guide to Drupal 8 is an Acquia post by WebChick, and it's really good. It's like a series covering a lot of what I talked about um, and some of the stuff I didn't talk about. Uh, it's a really good series. There's also a tutorial um, for site building, which is also an on, on Acquia site. Media Current, my employer, uh, we did a, uh, a whole uh, series on Drupal 8, went really deep on a few of the subjects like web services and stuff like that. Um, so check that out. And I also want to mention, plug the weekly drop. Every week there's new news about Drupal 8. There's discussions that are happening, even contrib projects that are already being developed. So if you want to learn about those, you know, that's a good resource for just in Drupal in general. But also I try to keep up to date with Drupal 8. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join me in this uh, session. Um, feel free to come up and get a, a free parting gift here. And uh, if you have any questions, Shoot. Yes? So there was a big hubbub uh, when Drupal 7 launched with the path upgrade from Drupal 5 to Drupal 7. Do you know what that upgrade, if it's a lot easier for the users and users to go from 6 to 8? Yes. So I really probably should add this as a section of this presentation. But um, previously, so there's hubbub about it for sure. There is no upgrade path from any version of Drupal to Drupal 8 in a typical way we do it. And who has ever updated like maybe five to six, six to seven? Has that been a, was that ever a fun experience? Right. So you go to update, so you like what the process is, you like go to, um, let's see how much time we have here. You go to like update.php, or well you upgrade your code, right? Um, you pray, you, you do anything that, uh, you know, that brings you good luck, and you run update.php, and then all your dreams and hopes are smashed. Well, you back up your database. Well, there's a lot of stuff you do, right? I've done it once successfully, and it was only because I didn't have, I only had like five contributed modules. Um, the bottom line is, that, and I'm not throwing stones at anyone, because the bottom line is like the whole process in the past has just been, like the, it's very hard to maintain backward compatibility. Like basically we would upgrade the database for, instead of like creating a new one, which doesn't, like most systems wouldn't do that. Um, I don't think you do that with a Rails upgrade or with a, or, you know, I don't know, I'm not a Rails developer, but I seriously doubt when they change the way their API works that, that they don't just migrate their data. Um, so all that to say this, they decided that most, most Drupal shops were doing migrations with the migrate module. So like you build, a, you build your site in Drupal 7 or 6 or 5 or whatever, and then you build a new site in Drupal 8 and so instead of having to wait till all these modules are upgraded and have a path that migrates all their data, you just build your site in Drupal 8 like you would, um, configure it the way you want, and then you migrate your data. And out of the box in Drupal 8 will ship with migrations from, I know from 7 and 6, I'm not sure about 5, but if it's not in core, like if it's not supported, somebody will write one. Um, it's just a matter of like somebody at Media Current, somebody at Phase 2, has a project where they need to do it and then they contribute it because that's like what we try to do as a community. We try to contribute stuff back. So, um, I mean, I have some projects where I'm grading from six to seven and um, I will use migrate module. So it's the best way to do it in my opinion and that's the way Drupal 8 is gonna do it. So we are not supporting like, a, we're not updating the database. So the other positive of that means there's no downtime. So like you can, you can have your Drupal 6 site here and your Drupal 8 site here in your, in, and basically migrate the data. You can continue the migration. You can migrate, say, on Monday. You migrate all your data. You start testing and testing and testing it. In the meantime, people that are still using the Drupal 6 site are updating content. They're doing stuff. And so when you're ready to switch over, you run the migrate script again. It just updates the Drupal 8 version, which people can also be testing. And then like, when you're ready, like when you're ready to switch over, it's just a, you know, a change either in your DNS or on your server. So there's no downtime, maybe seconds, you know, just whatever it takes for DNS to propagate. So it's a much better process like, than what it was before because if you did update.php, like your site is offline. Your site is offline. There's going to be downtime, especially with a big, up, big site. It's going to be down for a little, like minutes, which is unacceptable to a lot of people. That's why they do migrate. So hopefully that answers the question. Any uh, follow-ups anybody has with that? All right. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, as far as I know, that's, you know, not went away. Um, yeah, no, you, you can totally do multi-sites. Yeah, 
files interfere because everything's in the database. When you make a new multi-site, you no. have a database. No, nothing will be interfered because, like I said, um, you know, you're, it's, it's just the same. It's not really a difference. It doesn't really have any effect on multi-site unless, like, you needed to have a version for this, version of a module for this, like site one, and then a different version, like with different configuration for site two. That'll be stored in your database, or it'll be stored in the file system, which is connected to that site. So site one would have its configuration in in that sites wherever it's configured in the settings.php. So yeah, that's not an issue with configuration management. It it would work the same way it works today. So yes. Do you know if there's anyone already running Drupal eight in production? Even though it's oh yeah, like yeah. There. Sites? Say what? Like big sites. Uh, I think it was the Drupal seven examiner.com. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, huge, huge, huge site. Um. So Drupal.com is running Drupal 8, and this is kind of funny because Drupal. Who's went to ever been to Drupal.com? Not Drupal.org. Drupal.com. So Drupal.com is kind of like a, a marketing site, I would say. Like yeah, it's like a showcase. That's running Drupal 8, although it's kind of funny because it's a brochure site. You know, like whatever. <laughs> you can, it's not really doing anything too fancy, but it's running Drupal 8. Um, the uh, Symphony guys, the Symphony company, uh, they're running Drupal 8, and I'm forgetting the name of the company. Um, Somebody probably some Sensia Labs is that what it is? Oh, Sensia Labs. Labs, yeah, yeah. So they're running it. There's a bunch of people running it on their blogs. Um, somewhere I've seen a listing of like everyone running on Drupal eight. Um, I just don't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, although like I've heard from people that are doing it that you know not really a good idea at this point. When they most of them when they started it was before the alpha, so a lot of work <laughs> to because there's no upgrade path from like alpha 10 to alpha 14. Um, and 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 I've run you know a bunch of different versions of Drupal 8, and yeah, every time I'm doing a git pull, I'm pretty much rebuilding, you know, reinstalling because you know that's what it is, it's an alpha, so yeah, so like I don't know when that point comes when we start recommending building sites on Drupal 8, definitely the day it launches is fine, but. If you have the expertise, like you understand the kind of the concepts of uh, of Drupal 8, like the PHP object oriented stuff, the you know the plugin system and that kind of stuff that you would need to understand, you probably could start building Drupal 8 sites when it starts hitting betas, maybe. But you know, just understand that like you know that's gonna it's gonna be much easier to do it in seven. But if you have a long window of time on a project, like it's not gonna be finished for nine, ten months, maybe it is a good idea to run it on Drupal 8. Because of the advantages that we talked about, mainly configuration management, that's the main one that you just don't have in 7. Everything else, like a lot of that stuff I was showing, it's just like Drupal 7 except it's in core. So, so, so the latest version of V8 still doesn't have an upgrade path to uh, the V8 No. Oh. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> the next alpha will probably break. Like, so that's, it's part of the development process. They, they may change stuff out. Like they've, They've been working on uh, on the the uh, CMI stuff and changing stuff there. That now it's actually a lot more stable to to do. I did an upgrade just the other day to the. I just did a you know Git pull or whatever to the latest bleeding edge and that didn't have any problems. But like three months ago, every time every time I build my, my site out and do you know a Git pull, like something was broken. Um, so, but that's you know I'm not a core developer. I'm not as familiar with with stuff. I'd go in and check like oh yeah that's a bug, but um, yeah, so having that knowledge, it's a good time. It's a good time to kind of get into the core development, I think, um, and start helping. So, yes. No, it is not in core. Um, there's work being done. Like, so panels uses C tools. Panel, you know, there's a lot of work being done there. I'm not up to speed on that. Um, it's going to be an interesting thing. Like. Um, because the way Drupal, a lot on the back side, the back side of Drupal, a lot of changes have happened in the way a page is being built, and panels has has influenced that. But I think there's going to be a panels for Drupal eight, but I don't know where it is in the process. Um, I use panels quite a bit, um, and we use it on a lot of projects. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be something. Like if, if you need panels, I don't think you'll be using Drupal eight until. There's you know a panels module for Drupal 8. I'm not sure if there's going to be a panels module. It may be more componentized and broken up 
a little bit more. I just, I just don't know. I've heard a lot of talk about it. I don't think there's anything definitive. If anyone knows, please pipe up. But yes. Um, uh, at a long time QA guy, what I really loved about Drupal 7 was that they included uh, the testing module in the core. Is that still being retained for Drupal 8? The testing module? I'm not sure. I haven't used that much. Um, but, like, uh, simple test is gone. Um, but the testing for Drupal 8, I'm not that knowledgeable about it. But it, from all the people I know that do testing, it's, it's a huge improvement. Um, so I, I, I'm not that versed on, on the testing part of Drupal 8, but yeah, so people I trust say it, it's a huge improvement. So yeah, yeah. There may be some sessions this weekend about testing, like Behat. Behat is like taken over. I mean, everybody's using that, which is like behavioral testing. So like goes through the browser and you know checks that you can actually add a node and a field exists. We're using it on some projects. I, I'm still like really at the beginning stages of learning how to work on it and write tests with it. But um, yeah, it, it'll be nice when we actually can do that without it being a huge uh, slowdown on a project, which is what it is now. Like it's it's a slowdown, but it's a good. You, you need we need to have full test coverage, um, but it's pretty hard to do that as a, a Drupal developer. Yeah, some clients do if they understand they they want it, um, but. You know, it's, it just depends on the client, I guess. Large-scale clients definitely usually want that and require it. So, any other questions? All right. Well, again, thank you all for coming. Um, I don't think we have any evaluation stuff or anything like that. Like they do some, but uh, the video will be online, um, I believe, later on today. So, thank you again all for coming, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow.